Hey guys, what's up and welcome to a new Tesla update video. So today, as per usual, let's go over Tesla, let's go over the market, let's figure out what has happened today. Like I said, a pretty big day, pretty important day for the most part, and some pretty important moves happening right now for Tesla. So as usual, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button. It does help a lot if uh, this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. And of course, my membership section on YouTube is live. The link is below. For three dollars a month, you essentially get all my thoughts at intraday, as share option flow, all that kind of stuff on Tesla as it's moving throughout the live trading day. But moving into a Tesla closing down the day at about two hundred and sixty-three dollars, dollars rather, which is going to be a move to the downside of about one point four percent, which thankfully compared to the market isn't too bad. Slight outperformance with QQQ being down 1.5% roughly on the day. So overall, a bit of an outperformance by Tesla, but nothing too substantial. And unfortunately, not the best looking close. I'm not going to lie, right? So yeah, let's talk about it. So the first and foremost thing is this morning, and I've been telling you guys for a while, also my members especially, but I said it again today, six hours ago this morning, I'm expecting a bull trap around 270 into a sell-off over the next few days, so about 255, which is the 50-day moving average. But today is FOMC, so let's see what happens. And that's kind of what happened, right? It did go a little bit higher than I expected, so we'll go over kind of, you know, what happened. And the most thing that was confusing, so we've been kind of getting rejected by this 267 to 270-ish level, you know, this whole area right here, right? We broke down below it, constantly got rejected by it, supported by the important level down here in the low 260s, and we've kind of been ping-ponging between the two. Then we actually had a breakthrough right above it, and a pretty bullish breakthrough that kind of happened out of nowhere around 1 o'clock Eastern, which if we go to the two-minute chart, you can see uh, was right here, right? Just a random volume increase, right? This was before FOMC, this was like an hour before FOMC, so it wasn't nothing related to that at all. Some insider knowledge or some maybe short covering before FOMC, just in case. And it was specifically just Tesla. Like QQQ didn't really have that. Spy didn't have anything, you know, having a, a move there, you know, the way Tesla did. So it was just seemingly Tesla related. So what happened there? Who knows? I don't know what happened here. Something happened, pushed it much, much higher, and for a second looked pretty bullish. I'm like, wow, this is a lot higher than I expected. It went up to about 274 at the absolute peak of it, which is pretty good, right? And then, of course, massive sell-off, and then it bounced up again, and then, of course, FOMC started, and we had a massive sell-off pretty much uh, during the uh, conference and, of course, post-conference as well. But kind of what I expected, right? This almost got me as well. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I, I wish I sold calls here because I bought back calls uh, pretty much at what price we are at now uh, two days ago. And I wish I resold them here, but you know there was a chance that this could have actually flipped bullish, right? It was hard to tell for sure until, of course, this candle right here happened, and then obviously it definitely is not looking bullish anymore. But the bull trap happened, pretty massive bull trap as well, a little bit more of a bull trap than I expected, right? This was pretty severe, but nonetheless, it happened, and that's pretty much what we were expecting and I've been saying is going to happen, right? So keep that in mind. Now, moving into it, however, let's go back to the daily chart. This is the chart that's important today, in my opinion. Pretty ugly candle, right? This is this is uh, yeah, this is this is a very ugly. Let me let me bearish um, hammer candlestick. Let me see if I can find a nice image just so you guys can see another. I mean, this is pretty much it. This is like this is this is textbook, man. This is this is textbook. Can't really find a good one. It's not really showing here. I guess this one maybe, right? So you can see this one on the right over here. Hopefully, I'm not blocking them. Double check. Yeah. So this one right here, you can see, you know. I mean, this is a potential reversal. This is happening at the bottom of downtrend, but these kind of candles, a bearish hammer candle is something like this, right? Where it's essentially a very long wick. Um, and then the body usually wants to be sh uh, smaller than the, uh, the wick itself, which in this case it is. Ideally, the smaller the body, the better, but nonetheless, Pretty damn bearish looking candle, right? Definitely a, uh, a, a, an essentially an inverted bearish hammer candle. And it's looking pretty bad. And as if that was not enough, we also did break down and closed out of this channel to the south side. Like I said, these channels usually break down to the downside. Not always, of course, not always, usually. It's just a matter of when, not if. And it seems like that time might be now. Now, keep in mind, there is an important caveat here, right? First and foremost, you need follow through, right? There is still an absolutely real possibility that this is nothing more than a bear trap. That is a possibility. When we get right back into it, that has happened. You know, it can absolutely happen. So you want to take this still with a grain of salt, right? Anyone that celebrates victory too early usually gets caught with their pants down. So you don't want to be that person. And I've learned that the hard way many times in the past. So you want to see con confirmation. So there's two things that can happen here, right? Two, I guess three things. So let's talk about the three aspects. Number one is just a simple bear trap. We, we uh, tomorrow, for instance, come back up um, looking like a potential retest, and then we re-enter this overall uh, ascending channel. And then that would actually be very, very bullish. And I think from there, we will go uh, much higher. 
Now, that's option one. I think it's the least likely, but that is definitely still a possibility. Option two, we come up, retest it tomorrow or maybe Friday, but essentially we come up to retest it, uh, you know, pretty much around the same level we've been getting rejected at over and over and over and over again, you can see right here, around that 267 to 270 ish level, which will be a retest of this channel. And then, of course, assuming we get rejected and the retest is successful, we make our way down even further. And that's that. And option three is kind of related to option two, but essentially, this is just going to be a simple breakdown below 260, right? That is an important level. We've bounced off of it here, we've bounced off of it here, right? So it's a very crucial level to break down below for the bears and the bulls to defend. And if that happens, that would be very bearish. And I think that's where we're finally going to be coming down to my first kind of main price target where I think things will start getting interesting again, which again is around the mid 250s which is where the 21 EMA is, right? And where the 50 day moving average is. So that's pretty much right there. And it's not that much farther below us. It really isn't. So I wouldn't be surprised if it happens potentially even early in the morning, maybe a bit of a bear trap, and then we get a beautiful bounce, kind of like we had a bull trap here, just to flip, of course. And that, you know, of course, is a possibility. But the thing I'm most, I, I am more um, expecting, I guess, to happen, assuming, of course, we come down to these levels over here, this 255 or, you know, give or take, of course, is sideways. I really expect some sideways action. There is obviously a chance that we just completely bleed down and Tesla gets, uh, you know, a lot more bearish. But I really wouldn't be surprised if at the very least we get sideways action and we come down to this level and we just do nothing for a while. Honestly, we just do really a whole lot of nothing for a while. That would not shock me whatsoever as well. So those are the main things I'm personally expecting right now. And it's just a matter of confirmation. It's a matter of waiting for these levels to be, you know, um, broken or you know certain things to get broken right at the moment of course it's looking a lot more bearish than bullish could still be a bear trap so just be ready right if we come back and retest and it looked like the retest is successful pretty bearish that's where you enter puts maybe sell calls whatever things like that and then your stop loss will be pretty much if we re-enter the uh, channel and especially close the candle back in the channel, like a daily candle, right? Then, you know, that's kind of like a stop loss in my head, at least that's how I would treat it. Um, and of course, a break below 260 could be pretty bearish as well, though the downside from there shouldn't be too substantial, but can be definitely a few percentages percentages downside because we still have the gap below us over here at 248, which, by the way, this little pump that we had, like I talked about just now, um, this random pump that came out of who knows where, pretty much gap filled. This gap that we left open up here at around 274, pretty much gap filled it. It was only off by just a few decimals, right? But nonetheless, it has filled that gap as well. Now, interestingly enough, even with all this being said, option flow, surprisingly, it was extremely bearish. Oh, bull, bullish rather, sorry. Or was it this? I think it was this one. Was it this one? That's one day ago. Where's the one I posted today? I think it was this one. Yeah, it was this one hugely bullish like absolutely astronomically bullish like pretty much just straight bullishness across the board this was before fomc this was about 20 minutes or something like that before fomc and today you can see or rather right now you can see you know we did have that pump maybe that's why they were playing this little bit of a pump right here right or something i don't know i'm not really sure what they were playing there was really not that much of a pump considering we started off with a sell-off and the pump just barely recovered to where it was prior to so i'm not really sure option flow is always isn't, isn't always right keep that in mind it's just one thing to look at out of many things to look at just because option flows bull, uh, bullish or bearish doesn't mean it has to go bullish or bearish it's just one of many things to look at but with that being said definitely flipping a bit more bearish here but overall looking in my opinion pretty mixed kind of a 50 50 still for the most part as well right so other than that not that much more to talk about if we go back to the daily you can see right we're still entering potentially some you know not potentially but some actual high uh, volume territory, which again is around that, you know, 250s range, right? Give or take, right? Somewhere around the 250 to 260, anywhere around this kind of area. Beautiful, beautiful volume increase, which also will act as a support. So even though it's a pretty bearish close, pretty bearish candle, we broke out of an ascending channel, which is bearish as well. MACD is starting to flip a little bit bearish. The RSI is softening up. So there's a lot of bearishness. But even with that being said, there's still a lot of work, in my opinion, for the bears to do to truly flip this bearish, to truly, 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 truly flip this, like, you know, looking pretty darn bad. Because again, we have the volume support. We have the 50-day moving average support. We have the 21 EMA support. And just overall, just a simple resistance slash support area zone over here, which of course is going to act as such as well, which is also around 255, which you can see over here, acted as a bit of a support as well. So that's another territory that we are pretty much on our way into as well. But those are the main things I'm personally looking at right now. But ultimately, I'm expecting a bit more downside. And then honestly, I don't, I don't think Tesla is going anywhere 
bullish like i don't think tesla will have any substantial rally anytime soon i do think that it will take time until we re-enter into say the uh, the 300s i don't think that'll happen within the next month probably not even two if it were to happen i still think that it'll be probably somewhere around november give or take something around that area if at all if at all i do think it is when it'll happen um if it's going to be happening this year so I, I think that there's you know there's uh, more pain ahead uh, there's more pain ahead or at the very least some boring price action and uh the only people that'll be benefiting off of that are people that are selling options in my opinion that's just what i personally view right now but that's kind of how i'm seeing it so let me know what you think down below the squeeze is not saying anything right now as well not really squeezing not showing any signs of a squeeze as well it's gonna have a we're gonna need a lot more consolidation before that's gonna really start showing anything we have the 200 day moving average sitting way below us it's not even worth talking about yet could be eventually you never know but as of right now not really we have the uh, Bollinger bands which are not really looking that tight yet it's kind of you know looking pretty neutral so nothing really there to talk about as well but at this point it really comes down to just simple patterns which in this case overall look more bearish than bullish so let me know what you think down below thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed don't forget to hit that like button and as usual i'll see you tomorrow peace